Hold up your Bible. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God. How can you say that in Jesus' name and then not... Rock on, brother. Hey, you're listening to 200 Proof Gospel, the podcast. I'm Craig D'Onofrio. With me, Pastor Troy New Year. On the Skype, the other master distillers, Mark Sell and Timothy Roth. And today we're talking about Israel. 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 And uh, the moving of the capital and all sorts of stuff like that. By the way, don't be wait. sure to... No, no, the moving of the embassy. The, the embassy. embassy. Embassy, sorry. Uh, be sure to <laughs> subscribe to this program, iTunes, Spreaker, Podbean, all your other fun places to get podcasts. We're on Pirate Christian Radio Friday mornings. Uh, 200proofgospel.com is the website. 200proofgospel at gmail.com if you want to email us. I got an email recently from uh, one of my parishioners who showed me his feet and his dog, and apparently... They were listening to 200 Proof Gospel uh, in said position. So um, send us Brilliant. whatever you like. Uh, be sure to get the app. We didn't mention the app last time. You can get it for your iOS device or on Android. Mm. How goes things uh, mm-hmm. there, Troy? Uh, well, you can see me. You're looking right in my eyes right now. I am. So, so uh, don't lie. I can uh, see it. Yeah. He's I, looking into your soul. <laughs> I think they're going well. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Timothy, how are things with you? Okay. Uh, well, since we have a couple hundred miles between us, things are going great. Okay, good. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Wonderful, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Okay, back out from that mic. Woo! And uh, glad. <laughs> anyway, now that uh, you have either told me the truth or lied, I don't know which, but um, glad to have you guys on, on board with me. So... There's been all of this hubbub, I guess, about the U.S. Embassy moving from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Have they made the move yet? I don't know yep. if they've uh, made the move yet. Yeah, yeah, they've got yeah, like they a it open. they've got a storefront open, I think now. They, uh, next to Seven Eleven. Ex- yeah, yeah, yeah. I think something like that. The, you find the Jerusalem Seven Eleven right next to. Yeah, they hung the a US shingle Embassy. out front. That's I know that anyway. Yeah. So. So hey, you guys have been paying attention to this more than I have. Does anyone know why? the United States did this? A- anyone? Yeah. I believe it was a political move to help show our solitude with Israel or something. Solitude? Solidarity? So- y- yeah. Whatever that simony? word is. Or simony with them? The selling of bishoprics and whatnot? <laughs> 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 well, oh, it's good to be able to mock Timothy again. It's almost <laughs> like he was a seminarian once again. You uh, know, all I really know is that President Trump announced he was going to do it. Yeah. And then he did it. All right. And I forget if that was a campaign promise or not. I think it actually was, wasn't it? I, I, I don't remember. It was. And, and I think it's also a, uh, trying to send a geopolitical statement um, because of how, um, how the Muslim theocracies have tried to, and, and their continued stance, to want to destroy Israel. And trying well, and it to both not ways. recognize Israel as a legitimate nation also. We have to remember exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it, it, the geopolitical significance to, to marginalize uh, the radical Islam was a huge part of this. Because well, that's what it does then. Where, where before it was... It was seen as uh, an, a, an attempt to make both sides happy. Now, in uh, you say a geopolitical sort of thing. Uh, however, uh, among you know my circles of friends, uh, they recognize this as a an event of highly religious significance. And I see that yeah. uh, Craig here is uh, Craig is agreeing with me. Well, it's highly it, religiously it, because I am Jewish, you know. I'm a I, I heard Jewish that Methodist Episcopal Lutheran <laughs> Roman Catholic Hindu. 
Buddhist. Zoroastrian. Uh, anyway, uh, but Lutheran overrides all of that. Uh, no. It, Does it? it? I grew okay. up in this environment where Christians were considered, quote unquote, completed Jews. And that, uh, you know, they look at those scriptures that say, uh, if you curse Israel, you will be cursed kind of thing. And, and, of course, they put their twist on it, so that's what it says. And so Israel is where Jesus is going to return and establish his earthly kingdom. Because apparently when he said, my kingdom is not of this world, he wasn't sure what he was talking about. But since we can now read the Bible with the New York Times in the other hand, we can correct Jesus on his stance on the two kingdoms here. And, uh, but we know that he is going to establish his kingdom from Jerusalem, that the, the sacrificial system will be reestablished on the Temple Mount. And so we have to make sure that we keep the filthy Muslims off the Temple Mount. And, of course, Armageddon is going to be fought over all of this, and there will be blood up to the bridles of the horses. And, of course, we also know that the king of Spain is the Antichrist because he rides a white horse. Now, what movie are we reviewing? Wow. Right <laughs> this is all garbage oh, that I, I heard that growing up. Behind. Okay. <laughs> this, this is legitimate garbage that I heard growing up. Okay. Is, right. You know, uh, and, and I will say it is garbage. As, uh, you know, that premillennial dispensational world of the literal seven-year rapture, I mean, I mean seven-year tribulation, and then the rapture, or, you know, before the tribulation, depending, and, of course, that's, that's a big thing for That's a highly right debated And issue, then a yeah. thousand years where no one will die or grow ill, which means we are really going to be crowded. And then after that, Satan will be loosed for a little time. And then the, uh, I think that's when Armageddon is. I can't remember. It's been so long. And, of course, then the big slaughter comes. And then God will establish his permanent kingdom on earth. Wow, being Lutheran is so much easier. Yeah, yeah. He'll come I, in a flash of lighting. What... You're going to heaven. You're going to hell. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I don't know what was confusing about what I just said. I mean, it all makes perfect sense. I, you know, it's the chart that you're drawing here in the studio that yes. really helps me. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is this is subject to change as new revelation comes forth. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. So like when yeah. I was growing up in the '80s, uh, Russia, uh, they were the big thing. They were the bear. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so uh, not too long ago, it was China. But now it's kind of swinging yeah. back to Russia again, isn't well, it? Well, it's swinging back to Russia, but uh, we, we can't discount Norway. I mean, Norway could... Good point. Uh, you know, it's the small countries that you need to really keep your eye on. Places okay. like Moldova so, so and Lithuania. <laughs> they, they, could be, they could be trouble. They, they really could. Well, let's, let, let's do this. Let, let's recapture. Um, unless we just want to talk nonsense for the next uh, uh, 24 minutes. Um, you know, you said that a lot of this theology is garbage. It uh, is you know, let's, utter garbage. Well, let, let's begin by identifying what is true. You know, so is a Christian a completed Jew? Uh, are we, as Christians, children of Abraham? I would rather say that Christian Jews are completed. Okay. How's that? Are, are, we as, are we as Christians children of Abraham? Well, in a spiritual sense, yes. Abraham believed, and it was counted him as okay. righteousness. So okay. he Romans. believed in the promises of God, and mm -hmm. so in a sense okay. we are children of Abraham because yeah, yeah. we believe the same promises of God, the okay. promise of salvation. So then if, uh, if we are children of Abraham, yeah. then biblically... New Testament speaking, yeah. who is Israel? Well, the Lutheran answer is Israel the is church. God's people, the church. He came first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. His own rejected mm -hmm. him, and we are now his own. You know, I, 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 I want to actually just con contradict you there just Go one quick it. second. I think Lutheranly, Lutheranly? Sure, why not? Lutheranly speaking. If we're going to make up words, go for it. Maybe even Nagalianly speaking, ah. uh, if I'm right on this, yeah. uh, is uh, Israel, is that not Christ? That Christ oh, is Israel reduced well, to Well, actually, one. you're going Veltzian on it. Veltzian. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. James okay. Veltz was big on the Isra the Christ is Israel reduced, reduced to, to one. one. And go. it's good stuff. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I do. I like it a lot. Veltzian. Thank you. But we okay. are in Christ. Therefore, we and are in... we are the glory of Christ. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I am. I don't know about you. 
So, oh, fair uh, enough. Yeah, so, so scripturally speaking, the, the whole of the scriptures uh, uh, starts very broad, narrows down to one person, Jesus Christ, and then uh, broadens back out as, it, as we are folded into Christ. Yes. In, into, yes. As Christ is our head, and we are his body. So, uh, and so uh, Mark, then, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, what He's, is, he seemed to have a grasp on this whole end time stuff. A Me? Minute, no, Mark did. Mark did. A minute okay. ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, were you talking about Mark the Evangelist or Mark the Cell? Uh, Mark the <laughs> Cell. Uh, yeah, so, because I want to hear his voice, actually, because uh, it's right. very I always, I always make very the children soothing. cite the New Testament. Matthew, me, Luke, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so who's modern-day Israel? 329. Uh, Romans 329. Or that? Galatians 329. If well, you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. Heirs according to the promise. Okay. And so I, so in one sense, to to grasp that the new Israel is made up of all believers, anyone who believes in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are Abraham's offspring. So there's the comfort that we are, as believers, are the new Israel, and and so and that's one of the reasons why it gets it ends up, uh, biblically speaking, we end up short circuiting all the stuff Craig was talking about earlier, because uh, if, if by faith in Christ at your baptism, you are now Abraham's offspring. You are now circumcised to the heart. You are now a child of God. And now you become a member of the 12 tribes of Israel. And mm-hmm. in the moment, and when you die, the Lord translates you, takes you into life everlasting. And the full fulfillment of the children of Israel, the New Testament, uh, the New Testament tribe is complete now, and so that's where you know I I think then it simplifies it that we don't have to be so afraid of the end times because the end times all started with the conception of Christ. He was the final sign of the end times. And so the end times and all of its signs just continue to unfold until the until he returns like lightning across the sky. And it'll be done in the twinkling of an eye. That's so, my take on it. Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> what Mark said. Yeah. So um <laughs> sorry. So uh biblically speaking theologically speaking, Christologically speaking, all of that, uh, Mm -hmm. can you draw a line between uh, New Testament Israel and modern-day Israel? Uh, My my opinion is no, uh, because there is no such thing. In in the New Testament, I, I usually refer to people and say, Israel makes no difference today other than faith in Christ. Wait, 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 wait. So define what you mean by Israel there. Okay, Israel, the Israel, the state, the, Israel, the geographic the geo- area, right? Right. Well, no, it just well, not even not even Israel, the geo, uh, the piece of geography, but even Israel as a state, as a nation state, as means a na- nothing. The nation state born in 1948 means nothing. Means for Christianity. Uh, okay, theologically speaking. Politi- right, right. Politically, faith, entirely different story, but yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah for the okay. Christian faith, it means nothing. Okay. And that's why earlier when I said geopolitically, oh, that's significant. But that's all kingdom of the left stuff is, you know, so that, uh, so that we don't have to sit back and try to interpret it and wonder what does this mean for the gospel and the church. And I usually just bluntly tell people, oh, nothing, but it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> So, but what about the fact that they're going to reestablish the temple and start sacrificing again? What about that? Yeah, what? When? <laughs> <laughs> they are actually, you know, in secret making uh, the the ancient lampstands out of the original materials that... Uh, out of the original oh, materials? Come now. Well, uh, out of silver and gold, hey. I mean, not out of oh, the oh. actual silver Well, and gold. according to Harrison Ford, Oh, yes, sorry. The, <laughs> the, the gospel according the, to Indiana Jones. <laughs> you know, I, I frequently say that to my Bible study class. Like, you know, we, we lost the ark. Now, of course, if you've seen Indiana Jones, you know where it is. And increasingly, I get blank stares. 
Yeah, the the younglings <laughs> yes. I've noticed have yes. uh, they've totally missed the whole thing. Yeah, sad, sad. Yeah, you know, and it does get scarier. The older I get, the more they continuously miss the movie references I'm making. Yes, yeah. just taking all the fun out of class. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they are moving the U.S. embassy to uh, Jerusalem in a show of solidarity with Israel. Uh, Israel has been a tremendous ally of the United States, but I think a lot of this has been born out of that fundamentalist Christianity uh, and the understanding of the rapture, uh, which we call premillennial dispensationalism, because the understanding of this is God has behaved differently over seven dispensations of time, and now we are in this church age, and he is going to reestablish his kingdom and all of this kind of stuff. And so I think that a lot of evangelical Christianity has pushed our, our solidarity with Israel in a lot of ways. And I personally think that we should be allies with Israel because they are one of the few voices of democracy in the Middle East. And, of course, they represent freedom, uh, political freedom, as well as uh, religious freedom to some extent. And so I think that, you know, that behooves us to be their allies, but when you start throwing all of this rapture stuff in, it starts to get pretty fuzzy pretty fast. And uh, I think we need to understand the difference here of what's going on. And uh, so, you know, President Trump and others have uh, decided to move it. My, my response is whoop de doo for the most part. Um, but, um, you know, if there's something political that I'm missing here, uh, I'm all ears. But as far as the religious aspects of it, I, I don't really care. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Is that the end of the show? Yeah, it, <laughs> no, I, I, no, yeah, I agree. I, I think religiously, biblically, from a Christian point of view, it's absolutely meaningless, and and yet, and yet it it does play a huge role again in the politics and order, you know, and that's where I. You know, that's where I come from is how to bring some sense of order back in the Middle East so it doesn't self-destruct. And um, but it certainly isn't a biblical wish, so to speak. It's not as if I am now helping helping Israel or helping the politicians to fulfill God's word somehow. And it's amazing how many people want to be part of that movement um, cause it, it just comes up so often in Bible studies, um, the, the constantly the question about, well, what's the significance of Israel? How important is Israel? And I just always go back to Romans or Galatians and, and make the point, well, that's you. So how important are you? <laughs> you know, and they kind of look at me like, no, no, I mean Israel and the Bible. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, drag yeah. them back. That, that is the Bible, right? Them. You well, are the Israel. Yeah, yeah. And what no, oh. what I find interesting too is is that uh you know, certain sectors of Christianity will look at modern day Israel and uh, look at that as being a fulfillment of the promises God made to Abraham. And, and of course, uh, you know, promises God made to Abraham is that uh, you know, you'll uh, you'll have a land, you'll uh, you'll you'll be a nation uh, and you'll have my blessing, right? Uh but um just looked it up, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. Uh, says, for all the promises of God have their yes and amen in Jesus Christ. So, uh, you know, the, the fact that there is a modern-day nation-state named Israel, and it's sitting on that same geographic piece of land, uh, is not connected to any promise of God, because all the promises of God are wrapped up in Christ. You're going to be left behind with that kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> classic <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> i agree with you troy by the way Such a great thank, you. thank you so I mean, much great it, you know troy just has a stunned look when i said that like <laughs> i i can't even respond to stupidity like that i don't <laughs> well, even know how yeah, right. actually I, i'm thinking at our at our uh, at our at our winkle gathering tomorrow that uh, i'm gonna wait and when you turn your back i'm gonna have everyone in the room leave and we'll just <laughs> we'll throw some clothes on the floor and That's just have you wondering. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Hans Feeney has a has a genius uh, uh, little video. He does those Lutheran satire videos, uh, this uh, this rapture kind of stuff. Um, 
You know, I, I was part of a Bible study that had mostly evangelicals, uh, Saddleback community types and all that. And they always wanted to go off into the rapture stuff. And I kind of came to the point where I'd say, guys, it doesn't matter. And they'd stare at me like I was from Mars. And I'd say, if Jesus wanted you to know how he was going to come back, at what time and in what manner, he would have told you. So you really shouldn't care. You should confess he's coming again for his church, the end. But when you spend a lot of time and effort trying to figure this out, guess what you're not thinking about? Guess what you're not focused on? The finished work of Christ on the cross. And they get so obsessed with the second coming of Christ that they forget all about the atonement. They forget all about the first coming of Christ and why he came and where our salvation is delivered to us from that point of the cross and the atonement there. And, of course, they'd stare at me like I was from Mars and some sort of unbeliever because I, I kept trying to drive them back to Christ and him crucified. Don't worry about how Christ is coming back. He's coming back. Rejoice in that. Let's move forward. Let's go back to the cross and move forward in the cross. And, of course, that's, that's just heresy in so much of evangelicalism today. Uh, you know, you Lutherans, you're, you're stuck in the baby food of Christianity. We're, we're digging into the real meat of the speculation right. here. <laughs> we're, mat we're maturing, and you're such little children. That's right. And I am digging into the meat of exactly when Jesus is coming back and how, so that I will be right and not left. Well, but, but there you go. So uh, not only right, but I will be ready. Well, see, and, that's and the, the thing is there was an old song, Get yeah. Right or Get Left. So oh, Get Right or Get Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, but there's another song, I Wish We'd All Been Ready. Uh, we, we might just go out on that Could one, we? Uh, could I we finish that up? It, I do have it. Yes, handy. but uh, uh, oh, thank oh, you for having it handy. Oh, we've still got. We've, we've still got, got a few minutes. minutes. Just save that. Hey, save that one. Is but, Timothy still breathing? But uh, Timothy? Hey. Wait. <gasps> there it is. Okay. Timothy used to be a Baptist. What about you, Timothy? Timothy in a while. He what? He what? I got raptured. Are you kidding? Didn't you used to be a Baptist? No, he's not. He's breathing. <laughs> Turn Timothy into a Monty Python skit. Hey, hey Timothy, didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't you? I am not dead yet. <laughs> oh, that hurt. He's, uh, he's a pillar of salt. <laughs> didn't, didn't you used to be a Baptist? Am I mistaken? Me? Yeah. You are mistaken. Oh. We well, always I mean, oh. I, what you might be thinking of is I dabbled in some Pentecostalism, oh. <laughs> whatever that word is, in college. But you no, know, it, it, it's, it's okay. It was in college. It was <laughs> you, all experimental, right? Yeah, you experimented <laughs> in college with. <laughs> I did. That was my experimentation in college. Yeah, hurry up and finish that sentence so you know what you experimented. With. Yeah, uh, you know. I experimented. Okay. With Getting high on the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh. yes. See, for some it was uh, <sighs> experimenting yeah. with different herbs. Some it was experimenting with uh, alternate lifestyles. And yet for Timothy, it was being getting slain, drunk, being slain on the in Holy the Spirit. Spirit. Getting drunk on the Holy yes. Spirit. So did you ever speak in tongues or anything? Nope. That's, uh, that is what proved to my friends that I was not actually baptized in the spirit because I wouldn't speak in tongues. Yeah, I, I tried, but I wasn't going to fake it. So, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, me too. Yeah, that would be that would be his current members in his congregation. <laughs> we actually oh, yeah. hey, we actually talked about it. Well, I don't know when this is coming out, but we're recording the day after Pentecost. And we actually talked about that yesterday. Did you? We did. Yeah. What was said? I told them that that's not how God works. Oh, <laughs> well, how okay. he promises well, okay. to work. But see, he does promise to work in the bread and the wine okay, and the water. See. Word. Now, there we go. Back to my point that I was attempting to make before you all hijacked it. You is had that, a point? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. I was, I was how dare the, you hijack it? I'm still alive, Mark. <laughs> All right, but, what, uh, what was your point? But, but the, uh, the desire to be ready when Christ returns. Yeah. But Timothy just pointed out that, you know, to be ready is to be in Christ. And, uh, and so, and you pointed out, the atonement makes us ready for his return. No, no, so no, no, no. so no, we, no. Uh, we just camp out there receiving the sacraments. We're baptized. We receive the Lord's Supper. We've got the body and blood. We are ready at a moment's notice. No, always, no, no. always, you, always, always ready. We are ready. By not ever having a lustful thought, never cussing, never drinking alcohol, by all means, don't do that. 
And if, if you smoke tobacco or if you know <laughs> anyone who does, you must shun them as well. And this is how you're ready, by totally purifying yourself. You know, you, you could actually become like the patron saint of my, fam my family, St. Onofre, St. Humphrey, who was a naked hermit in Egypt who lived in a cave. If you were Humphrey, you would be ready because you have given up all, worth, all worldly uh, lusts and desires and everything else and completely yeah. lost your mind, and you now live naked in a cave. That was so tried in the 1800s, too. I think they're called Millerites. Yeah. 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 They were, they were Mark, and now you're there. wondering why I just stopped talking. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I think they're talking about beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Millerites. The Millerites. Can, can, oh, man. Can someone back me up here to, to defend me to Craig that we actually are saved by the gospel? Can, can you do that for me, guys? <laughs> all right that wraps up the show clearly <laughs> well but i mean speaking speaking going back to pentecost um <laughs> totally forgot where i was going with this uh you you said exactly. that uh that's not the way god works right what was i gonna say <laughs> Something really well, profound. That's oh, oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I talked to the, I told them about my my experimenting in college, and I mentioned that, <laughs> you know, that that there are different criticisms that I received because I was, you know, Lutheran and, and Lutherans, um, you know, you quench the spirit because yes. you mm. you follow liturgy, the liturgy a uh, liturgy and you sing oh. hymns out of a hymn book. But our worst offense, and I, this was while I was preaching, I said our worst offense that I was accused of was you guys bury your nose in a book and concern yourself with past events instead of experiencing the power of God in your life now. And um, doctrine. Yeah, and that doctrine. Doctrine. <laughs> Let's let's just bask in this for a moment, shall we? I need a need a lighter. Wave it back and forth. He's gone. He's raptured. Oh, if we'd only been ready. All by himself. He got left behind because, I, uh, because he was walking up the hill. He he um, he did it wrong. I, I I need a heavy metal screamo version of that song, please. <laughs> I wonder if there is one. There probably well, is. But That's... I love when people bring up those uh, those passages of scripture to support mm. the rapture. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you look at the context, it says that it'll be like in the days of Noah, where people will be marry and going on with life and then all of a sudden some will be taken away while others are left now here's the question in the days of noah who was taken away from the earth and who was left behind <laughs> noah and his family were kind oh, of wait the, oh no, wait wait no they one. were left behind wait no they, no one was taken from the earth <coughs> I'm well. confused. You've confused me. Well, <laughs> Noah, and his, was, Noah and his family were baptized by water. But right. they didn't get but wet. Who, okay, how so about this? Baptized who spirit, disappeared obviously. from the earth and who was left behind? Oh, I see. You, you get what I'm going there? Yeah, yeah. So all the evil so, people yeah. disappeared from the earth. If it's yeah. like the days of Noah, I want to be the one left behind, if you know what I'm saying. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. So so here's here's a good one. Uh, the pastor that I grew up under who died a few years ago, um, he, he, by the way, the Lord revealed to him that Christ would return before he died. So, oops. Uh, but <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> aside from that... Talk about it. Guy. Wow, Craig, how low can you stoop? He, uh, yeah. yeah, well, you know, that's me. Um, <sighs> but aside from that, he came up with this idea that science will be able to explain the rapture. So what will happen is 
your soul will be taken to heaven and your body left on earth. And so basically this Gnostic it, separation of soul and body. But I think that we call that death, where yeah. your soul leaves your body and your corpse is left. Well, I, I don't, so I don't get it. So basically it's kind of this Jim Jones, uh, we will escape the earth and our souls will ascend by drinking the Kool-Aid or something like that. So, what? Well, okay. So yeah. w- was science going to preserve your body while your soul partied up in heaven then? Or um. Or, uh, um, or was your body just left to rot? Yeah. One um. of them. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, I I think a lot of the things that <coughs> that we've been talking about is it, it falls into a category of people wanting to be more special than the normal Christians, mm-hmm. whether it's rapture, you know, the whole millennialistic mess, or um, I've got the inside source on Israel. Um, it, there's always this yearning to want to break away from the teachings of the church so I could be a little bit more informed. I think Craig pointed out early, it, 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 earlier, it's, it's like a form of Gnosticism because mm. I've got a little bit more knowledge than the rest of you Christians. And, and it kind of feeds in you know, to our selfishness, our, our, our egos, when we want to move outside of Scripture. Yeah, nothing is quite so boring as drinking wine, eating bread, and having water poured on you. That's the exactly. point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. yet, uh, but everybody and, has access to water, right? <laughs> and and we had we had a bunch of baptisms this weekend for Pentecost, and and it was just a wonderful example of being able to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit and being able mm. to see the miracles of the Spirit. Did they speak in and, huh? uh, n- No, but I did take I did take a fire extinguisher into the pulpit just in case something else showed up. But just in oh, uh, yeah, yeah acolytes yeah. getting a little crazy there, Mark. That's right. These little flames, you know, don't want to burn the place down. But it, but it, you know, it's one of those things where people, it, it's the normalcy of God's word that is really offensive to people in the end. And 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 then it turns them on their own vocation, their own daily callings. Ooh. So uh, anyway, we're we're pretty much out of time. I will come out and say this: I am personally against the embassy moving because there is a tiki bar in Tel Aviv and not one in Jerusalem. Mm. And uh, so, if I was to go visit the American embassy, I would want to make sure that there was a tiki bar nearby. I was oh, not aware of. Tiki yes. Bar Theology. I just Googled yes. it. Okay. There it is. Um, Christ is coming again to judge the living and the dead. The end. Who cares about your nonsense? Stop reading the newspaper with a new uh, with a Bible. Just read one or the other at a time. And uh, <laughs> trust that Christ has finished everything. And uh, you are ready. But uh, if you're not ready, here's some good guilt for you to leave on. <laughs> And uh, feel feel shame until next episode. We'll see ya. <laughs> I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. How could you have, have been, been so blind? blind? The father spoke, the demons died, the sun has come, and you've been left, left behind. behind. You've been left behind. Bye, cruel. You've been left behind. <laughs>